Okie dokie, everybody. Hi. We are officially live, just waiting for uh, for Facebook to catch on. So we'll spend a couple minutes just kind of chatting. And as everybody jumps on, we will uh, go ahead and start the, start the read. Um, hello, everybody who's jumping on. We'll just let everybody uh, jump on for the next couple minutes, and then we'll... Um, We'll get to it. Hey, Sandy. Hey, darling. Um, hey, Sharon. Uh, so glad everybody's able to to join me this this afternoon, this evening, this morning, depending on depending on where you're at uh, in the world. Hey, Frida. Hey, Sarah. Hey, everybody, jumping on. We'll give everybody a couple minutes to to just jump on, and then we'll we'll get to it. Yeah. So, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Uh, Ohio, konnichiwa, konbanwa, depending on where you, depending on where you are um, in the world. Hope everybody's staying sane uh, and having a, a fabulous week. I know we've got some pretty strange stuff happening all over the world right now, but uh, hopefully we can take your mind off it for just a few seconds. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well. We'll just give everybody a couple more minutes and we'll get to it. If you have questions, comments, concerns, things you want to talk about before we before we jump into the book, feel free to to post them in the comments and we'll we'll just kind of chat real quick. Just sipping on some tea. Hi Fiona, hi Nutmeg, hi Victoria, hi Fran, hi Susan, hi Sarah, hi Sally, mm, uh, Roma, Jenny, Tanya, Mary, Sarah, Susie, Beth, hey Beth, Yvonne, Sharon, Mary, so glad everybody's, everybody's jumping on. Always nice when we can come together for the mutual purpose of, of talking about feet. Hey Flick, how you doing? Yep, everything's going as, as good as can be expected, you know, with the uh, impending shutdown over in the UK and the election happening in the US, I think I think all we need to do is just smile more at this point, smile more and a little bit of laughter as medicine. So hopefully we'll be able to turn this book reading into a comedy routine. Um, kisses from Wales. Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate it. Nina, hello. Now everybody's saying hi to each other in the comments. I love it. That's one of the things that I absolutely adore about um, just the, the reflexology community in general is it really is such a community. Uh, lovely weather. It's lovely weather in Florida too. Um, glad the, the weather is at least nice. Sandra, Gail, Patricia, Felicity. Hello, hello. Yes, I'm definitely trying to distract myself from the election. Um, anything, anything to distract myself at this point. Uh, I am thankful to be very busy at this point because it keeps me, keeps me focused on things that are not so stressful. Hey, Lena, how are you? Hey, Lee, glad to see you jumping on. Everybody, we'll give them just a few more minutes. We'll start at about 105, um, and we'll, uh, we'll start reading. Oh, hey, Russ! What's up, my man? Hope you're doing well. Um, Sharon and Sandy just going back and forth. It's all the Irish and English. You know, it's it's so funny. So, um, I shared the, uh, the National Conference for Reflexology and Bodywork Practitioners, uh, which I'll be speaking at end of February. And they just announced that they're doing... Uh, they're live streaming the conference, so they're doing it online, right? And they're doing a uh, kind of sneak preview Secrets of Reflexology event on Saturday, which is fully booked, and y'all booked that up in like two minutes. But they were shocked. They were like, oh my God, had we known that, you know, there was such a large portion of the reflexology community over in the UK and over in Ireland, we would have made the conference digital a long time ago. And I'm like, well, yeah, duh. Um, that's where that's where all my people are at, um, for sure. But 
you know, it's it's lovely to see what COVID has kind of forced us to do as a community to go digital, to connect with each other virtually, and to really do things like this, right? And and rely on these groups and and really make sure that uh, our community, although we are widespread and international, it still feels still feels small, still feels close, still feels warm. Um, hey Leslie, hey uh, Elspeth, hey Gail. Um, okay, so it's at 105 and time to get into the, the reading portion of our In His Words. So I'll be reading from my book, uh, Foot Reading, a Reflexology Primer on Foot Assessment. Um, it's a thin book. It's not necessarily super thick, but I packed as much information as I could in the book as possible. And so I'll read a couple of the important sections that I think are really relevant for, for what we're going through right now, and as well as just to give you a basic kind of premise of, of what the book is about. And I'd also like to kind of pause in between reading those sections and answer questions and talk about how I view reflexology, how I view foot reading, and and all of that, all of that stuff. Um, and I'll be kind of looking at your comments as I read and hopefully not get too distracted. Um, okay. <clears throat> Let us begin. Would you all turn to the the introduction if you're following along? I feel like we're at church. We're at Reflexology Church right now. Um, pay attention, children. Just kidding. Um, introduction. On a daily basis, I explore the hidden world of feet decoding the messages held within our five-toed friends and relaying that information to their owners in an effort to heal the bond between the individual and their body. It is with great pleasure that I sit down to write this book because discovering this content was life-changing for me, as I hope it will be for you. There is a magic that is present when you are able to see into an individual and understand their makeup but it is another thing entirely to demonstrate the physical validation that solidifies that intuitive understanding. Foot reading has done that for me and can for you. The applications for this knowledge are limited only by the imagination. Before we begin that process of imagining, let's outline the content you are about to pour yourself over. This book contains the compilation of my understandings about the body and how the body's interconnected nature is entirely represented in full on the extremities, specifically the feet. However, I'm not just referring to the physical. Another truth I have validated through my footwork is that the body is linked to the internal, mental, and emotional states of an individual not in a pie-in-the-sky, tree-hugging, kumbaya way, but in a concretely mappable and observable way. Our state is made manifest through the various bone, muscle, and fluid pathways via the power of our nervous system, which uses both our physical and internal blueprint simultaneously. These two premises, that the whole of the body is mirrored on the individual part and that the mental emotional state is intertwined with the physical form are the basis of my work. Likewise, this content is alive. I cannot accurately explain how it is alive, but I feel as though I have been guided through every step of this journey by the feet themselves. The idea of reading the feet has a massive gravitational pull over my being, and because of that, I believe that this work desires to grow through being shared. I will allow the experts of creativity, such as Elizabeth Gilbert in her book Big Magic, to further explain the fullest extent of being partnered with such a blazing ball of creative thought form. That is to say, I am also learning more and more every day about the volumes of information contained within the visual and textural patterns of the feet themselves. I'm sure I will reprint these concepts many times in the future as I expand my awareness of the subject, 
but at this time, allow me to share with you what I have come to understand. This book is arranged to gradually build your knowledge of core foot reading concepts. First, we will begin by explaining the zones and their significance to mapping the physical, mental, and emotional sections onto the feet. Next, we will discuss symptomology in depth through the theory of the four elements, earth, air, fire, and water, to describe the various distortions and their meaning that you will come across when assessing the tissues of the feet. Once a mapping framework and vocabulary are built, we will dive into the art of assessment and put together the story that the feet are trying to tell. Finally, I will expand into the other three extremities and allow those more passionately drawn to reading the hands, face, and ears to explore that additional content after the foot reading fundamentals have been understood. Take the following information in slowly like a good tea, sip it and enjoy it. Let the principles and definitions roll around your mental taste buds until the overarching themes are fully known and integrated. I've included many stories within this text about my personal experiences within my reflexology practice to better explain the various concepts in depth. Likewise, you will find that cross-referencing this work with your previous foot experiences and those of friends, family, will be very validating and enlightening about the true interconnectedness that has been present this entire time right under your nose, or rather, under your feet. As with all true practices, the art comes after the science. Mastering the basics takes time and repetition. Looking and feeling many feet is essential. This collection of information is meant to be a starting block for that process. Everything is wonderful in theory and on paper, but living this practice in the real world is what will produce excellence. For now, enjoy the ideas and concepts within these pages but know that to get good at the art and science of foot reading requires a constant reinforcement of the basic principles. No one can do the push-ups for you, so get out there and see some feet. That's the introduction. Um, hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining in. We're up to about 75 to 80. Hello, everybody from the UK, Plymouth, Devon, you, uh, Love your work. Thank you so much, everybody. So glad to be here. Let's keep reading. Um, we'll go next to the section mapping the feet. Reflexology is where this entire journey started for me. I didn't intend to work with feet. I didn't even consider it an option until I had hit a personal wall in my bodywork practice back in 2010. I was working too hard and blew out my shoulder. I subsequently threw myself into workshops on massage technique and tried to learn how to work smarter to save my body and better serve my clients. Exploring other manual therapies, I realized that they were mostly, with a few exceptions, trying to force their will onto the tissues of the body. I knew that the body's pain was a message that begged to be understood not simply hammered out or hammered on until it relented. I needed to find a practice that listened and addressed the body's call for help, and that spark of a desire dragged me into my first reflexology class against my will. True story. The flyer for that faithful reflexology class I had actually thrown in the trash. <laughs> Seriously, that's what happened. It was my then partner, Richard, who literally reached into the trash, pulled the flyer back out, handed it back to me and said the magic words of, try it, you might like it. Ooh, getting a little emotional. Ooh, gets me every time. Collect, collect. Okay, 
At the time, I didn't expect to find everything I was searching for within the feet. But I did end up going to that class. The experience taking the course was average. Nothing special. But the practical side of the work is what blew me away. Taking the foot techniques back to the table, I witnessed firsthand the account of the body's palpable response to the hands-on application of pressure when targeting the sensitive nerve endings on the feet. From back problems to digestive upset to hormone imbalances, all symptoms were touched by the power of the foot reflexes. Pain I wasn't able to influence through manual therapy was melted away when I addressed the feet. As a mysterious bonus, clients were reporting emotional relief, habit cessation, and a profound inspiration during our sessions. The work that I had thought was irrelevant was in fact the first real glimpse of what I was looking for all along, a modality that allowed me to bring balance to the entire person. From those first moments, I began to develop my reflexology practice with the feet as my sole focus. That was a pun. Diving headfirst into formal certification in reflexology and sitting for two national reflexology exams through the American Reflexology Certification Board, I began to max out my credentials. Still thirsty for more knowledge, I started to explore how others practice the art and science of footwork. By chance, I came across a small book on foot reading. This book was less than stellar, and the content, I would later find, was largely a reprint from the works of others. Scandalous. But a basic idea was conveyed. The reflexes for the physical body aren't the only thing that can be mapped onto the feet. Additional research revealed to me that there was an entire subculture of foot assessment that no other reflexology literature had mentioned. The painful fact emerged that reflexology is a myopic technique, only concerned with the hands-on manipulation of the reflexes. The primal idea of press reflex fix issue pervades reflexology literature and there is no, there is little to no mention of assessing those same reflexes, let alone considering the mental emotional aspect of the feet. Instead, there are only rumored tales of expert reflexologists who are able to truly see into the body through the foot reflexes after many years of practice. Rarely do these reflexologists explain their approach or document their work. What reflexology has developed into is a limited definition that defaults to a manual therapy. In some states here in the US, reflexology cannot be practiced without extensive licensure, which further ignores the practical application of assessing the very reflexes they are licensed to apply pressure to. I wish to correct this trajectory. Instead of blinds technique, and operating by routines based on concepts such as press point fixed issue. Reflexologists, and indeed the general public, should be taught foot reading, adding how to appropriately assess the physical and internal signs of stress through the window of the extremities to the conversation. This new approach will emphasize and implement an active dialogue between someone assessing another or self-assessing, facilitated by theories outlined in this text. Courageously listening to the body's voice is a missing element within the current reflexology atmosphere. We could dramatically increase the value of our reflexology applications with the addition of assessment, or even creating a consultative approach that does not include manual therapies and relies strictly on lifestyle correction to achieve results in the needed alignment moving forward. Hence, this book was created in an effort to start a new dialogue within the reflexology community. So, pretty powerful stuff. I reread that and I was like, damn! Um, but anyway, continuing. The Origins of Reflexology. 
Essentially, the origins of reflexology began with a seminal concept that the body and its parts can be mapped onto the extremities. Different cultures have adopted and transformed this idea to include or exclude the surfaces of the tongue, face, eyes, hands, the thumb alone, the feet, and other surfaces. We won't say what surfaces. <laughs> Each emergence of reflexology theory has its own reasoning and vocabulary behind the mapping diagrams and technique. However, the core idea remains the same. We have access to the whole through the part. A perfect book for this is Reflexology, Art, Science, and History by Christine Issel, which I will let illuminate the exact dates and timelines independent of this work. We are more focused on the immediate theory of assessment here. I will not attempt to explain the Eastern variations of reflexology practice as they are not my purview. However, in the West, the popular reemergence of reflexology is credited to Dr. William Fitzgerald, who practiced a technique called zone therapy. Fitzgerald passed on his work to Joe Shelby Riley, who then passed it on to Eunice Ingham. Ingham created the modern, the modern interpretation of the reflexes on the feet and hands that we know as reflexology today. Again, here we see the work has evolved to echo the body's likeness on the feet and hands. It is from the work of Ingham's lineage that I, that I initially learned to practice the hands-on technique reflexology. The shocker came when foot reading was introduced to the equation, as most reflexology maps only focus on the physical reflexes of organs, glands, and joints of the body. The integration of foot reading brought forward the missing mental-emotional interpretation of the foot sections into my practice. I had been trained to focus on reflex locations, such as the hip reflexes, the eye and ear reflexes, the lower digestive reflexes, glandular reflexes, etc. Foot reading is the opposite and maps the manifestations of internal stressors such as one's sense of security, family and relationships, career, emotions, and mental state. The two schools of thought are opposite in content, yet both propose a similar teaching each of the two schools of reflexology theory details half of the full picture. One limits itself to mapping the physical body structures, while the other limits itself to the subtle personality traits of a person and coaching someone based on the messages held within the feet. In this tome, we will be weaving both perspectives together, helping you learn to offer both meanings and understand the true interconnectedness of the body. The discussion of the subtle and the gross aspects of assessment work together and give a complete story of what is happening on all levels of an individual. Moving into a more holistic framework of how symptoms originate and fine tuning all aspects of the self brings reflexology into a whole new realm as a craft. Understanding that united perspective is the message I impart most onto my students. Um, yeah, so that's where I'd like to stop for now. And I have two other sections that I would like to read. Um, but I thought that I would just take a couple seconds to answer some questions and, and kind of look through the chat real quick. Um, hello, everybody jumping on from Ireland, New Zealand, uh, Sarah, Lisa, Bev, Bev from Canada, um, Sally, Karen, hey, Karen Middleton, so great to see you, Amber, Deborah, Angela, Sarah, thank you so much, Glenn, Glenn's here, mm, Glenn, hope you're doing well, every time I see a guitar, I think of you, um, I'm so glad that you enjoyed the book, Mary. Um, let me take a swig of tea and then we'll, we'll get back to it. Mm. Okay. So I just went through the introduction, right? Um, and then I'm gonna skip 
the meat of the book where I talk about the mapping and the elements and a lot of my stories. And I wanted to jump to uh, page 71 where I talk about coaching through the feet because it again re-emphasizes something that I think we as reflexology practitioners kind of need to hear right now, which is our training in reflexology is not just a manual technique. And what we have to bring to the table is valuable even when we cannot touch. And uh, especially now with the UK going back on lockdown starting tomorrow, everything that's happened with COVID, I think it is very important for us as practitioners to understand that we can use foot reading and foot assessment in order to help clients overcome health issues and coach them along the way without needing to be hands-on. Um, and I talk about that in my book. So I thought we would pick up there uh, and also then kind of talk about exploring the other extremities since this is largely a group of reflexologists and you know basic reflexology theory. Let's talk about some of the fun stuff and the advanced stuff. Yeah, okay. So for those of you following along in your, your course material, we are on page 71. Um, coaching through the feet. After the basic mapping has been learned and the elements of a symptom understood, there comes the moments when it all needs to be put together into a concise package, wrapped in a pretty bow and presented to a client. This is the art of coaching a client via the markers you find in the feet. I will do my best in this section to explain in detail my science to this process, but it is an art. There are concrete aspects of every dialogue I have in regards to aspects like the timeline, adjectives used, and communicating the information I am seeing into a digestible message. At the end of the day, there is practice, time, and experience that will be the gateway to mastering this advanced aspect of foot reading. When I studied reflexology, I was told that it was a hands-on technique Studying massage therapy before that conveyed the same message. You must be in the room doing the technique in order to succeed. When I began to accrue clients in other states and around the world looking for me to read their feet through the screen of a computer, my conception of what reflexology and bodywork is and isn't was flipped on its head and there was no recovering. The dramatic transformations, testimonials, and outpouring of gratitude that came from simply relaying the messages I found in people's feet was an unshakable reality. It just so happened that there was no hands-on technique involved. Let that sink in. Detaching from the normal definitions of reflexology and into the realm of foot reading has illuminated the theories I have shared in this work. Putting them together for each individual client in a coaching format is a valid way to practice this information. But the hands-on work does help jumpstart the process. I would not be here today without my reflexology sessions, and I certainly would not have been exposed to the same amount of feet without first pursuing the bodywork aspects of this craft. That being said, the two can exist independently of each other but there is a certain natural magic when they are paired. I encourage you to delve as deep into the practice of seeing the entirety of the individual through the lens of the feet as you see fit. One side of the coin may call you more than the other. For me, with my gentler touch, stronger verbal skills, and a pointed intuition, assessment is where I've been able to shine, and likewise the teaching of that assessment. Your voice must be fully expressed through your chosen modality, and you may wish to be more hands-on or more dialogue-based with your clientele. I have sessions that are solely, that was another pun, coaching either through video or in person, and some that are strictly hands-on. Pause, like I literally have a client coming in after this one-on-one, this -on -one, 
who's just reflexology. And then I have a client right after that that's literally coaching and consultation. That's, that's kind of what I'm talking about. Some hands-on sessions will drift to incorporate more coaching and vice versa as the client and I interact during our time together. But the exchange is organic and always what is needed. Do not feel that you are more or less noble if you do not incorporate coaching sessions into your practice. Trying to force a verbal exchange that is not within your natural strengths can be awkward for both parties involved. Do not let a discomfort deter you either. Many successful endeavors are first approached with hesitancy. Instead, play and seek to find the perfect balance for you as a practitioner. I believe the feet will take you where you need to go. Let them speak to you in the way only they can and everything will work itself out. That is my roundabout hippie statement of saying just do the work. Putting it all together. Time and experience is the way you perfect your craft of giving meaning to the markers you find within the feet in a clear and concise manner. There is no substitute for that. The process revolves around developing a Rolodex of feet in your mind and gradually seeing live markers that you correctly identify. Once you have a success, file that experience away so next time you see the same marker on someone else, you know exactly what that means. There is a formula to follow for giving interpretation though. First, ask the client to describe in detail what they are feeling in their feet. Normally, my clients come in with a particular issue that they just cannot get rid of. So for the first few minutes of the session, before any visual assessment of the feet takes place, I listen. I'm specifically listening for their adjectives and key words at this point. Sometimes they ramble, and that's totally okay. But every couple sentences, they will drop some hot word that clues me into what I might find in the feet. Once I have an overview of their story, what they are feeling, why they came in, and a handful of adjectives to use during our conversation, I then ask my questions. The second and more specific thing I want to know is about the timeline. The timeline is so key to associating the symptoms with a stressor and shedding light on the seemingly random pieces of this story to reveal that everything is in fact interconnected. I'm searching for a start date and any details from then until now that are relevant. Again, the client may veer off track here and there and begin to babble, but your job is to funnel the conversation by re-asking about what you need to know. Do not underestimate the babble though, because their venting builds rapport. Just make sure to finally arrive at the goal of getting your timeline straightened out. Last, we will proceed to our visual assessment of the feet. Here you want to identify the zones where a marker has appeared. This is why memorizing the meaning of each horizontal and vertical zone of influence is so important. The meaning of the horizontal zone will come first, followed by the vertical zone, such as a marker in horizontal zone two and vertical zone three, how your chest shoulder area and your feelings and emotions are being influenced by your upper digestive system and your career. See how I did that? I took both the physical and the mental emotional meaning for the horizontal zone where the marker is located and said it was being influenced by the vertical zones, physical and mental emotional meaning. It's that simple. Bringing the entire story of keywords, timeline, and the assessment of the actual marker creates the story. At the end of this section, I have some trial cases for you to work with, simple recounts of actual clients for you to start practicing your analytical skills. Remember, this book is meant to be a guide, and there is no substitute for live foot reading experience. So make it your mission to put the following framework into action as you put the vocabulary to use in actual conversations. Good luck. Cool. Um, so that's, that's the next section. 
Um, it's okay if your connection's bad, don't worry, everything's being recorded. Coaching through video and virtual, I talk about that in my in my online course. Um, for sure, yes, listen and observe, Amanda, so, so, so important. Excellent. Um, what is the cost of your book and when, uh, where can I purchase? It's on Amazon universally. Uh, I think it's like 12 bucks, uh, 10, 10 pounds UK. Uh, conversion might be a little off. There is also an, an electronic version of the book, which might be a little cheaper. Um, okay. So the last section that I wanted to read before I kind of wrap up the reading and and just kind of open it up to, to questions, comments, concerns about foot reading and, and us just kind of talking is um, exploring the other extremities. Because I think as a reflexology community, you know, we're so focused on the feet. And in my experience, uh, that can be somewhat of a detriment because uh, and maybe having a massage background is is a little bit uh, kind of coloring to my experience. But every once in a while, I would get a client who would come in and they would want to try reflexology, but they would hate having their feet touched. And I think that it's important for us to have alternatives. And I know that um, not everybody is a fan of the other extremities, but I do think that you know, working with hand reflexology, face reflexology, and ear reflexology. You know, Karen Middleton is a great resource for the ears. Uh, Ziggy Bergman, Flawless, and Lone Sorensen for the face. You know, there there are practitioners who are being more vocal about reflexology being more than just the feet. But from an assessment standpoint, we can look at these extremities too. And even, um, it, it can be even more fun, honestly, because when a client comes in, their feet are still in their shoes, but their face is wide open for you to see. Uh, and so you can often see markers on the face sooner than you would see them on the feet. Um, and I can't tell you how many clients have just been floored uh, with um, the information that I'm able to tell them before they even write anything down on their intake form. Yeah, Just because I'm able to use the map that I put on the feet on the other extremities. right? So we'll finish uh, with this last section and then we'll open it up to question and answers um, for a little bit. Uh, for those of you following along, we're on page 105, exploring the other extremities. Exploring the other extremities. I couldn't stop at just the feet. The body wouldn't let me. Once I became proficient at reading the feet, I was brought a series of clients who displayed prominent markers on the hands, face, and ears as well. This was perplexing to me, and I felt a deep asking from the body to explore the zones of reflexology on other surfaces. Using the map I've already outlined in this book, and using my clients as test subjects, I proceeded to occasionally analyze the markers on the hands, face, and ears with astounding results. It all worked. This revelation was both exciting and disturbing on many levels. The first roadblock I had to encounter was that I was the foot guy. Branching into the other extremities required additional explanation that I still wasn't comfortable discussing at the time. But the hands, face, and ears gave me markers that I just couldn't ignore. I still use the feet as my primary source of assessment, hence the focus of this book on the feet. But I do respect that the other extremities do have a voice of their own, and I would be remiss if I did not include that voice here. There are also nuances I've learned along the way that may be helpful as you explore mapping the other surfaces I outline. The major purpose of this section for me is because of the students that I've taught. In my classes, there are students who seem to be drawn to a particular extremity with a gravitational pull that surpasses the others. 
I respect this natural inclination, and understand that I have found my niche in the feet, but others may find another extremity more valuable. For this reason, I have added this section to the book to inspire the next generation of hand readers, face readers, and ear readers who may find this content more valuable. Just as the feet have called me to uncover their mysteries, you may be beaconed by a different surface. The mapping system I've already outlined in this book will be applied just as it exists on the feet. This gives you an easily transferable knowledge base to begin exploring the other extremities while using the vocabulary and grid that I've hopefully drilled into your head up until this point. The challenge will be gaining your own experience, which I cannot provide in this text. I've worked extensively with the feet, but I only claim to dabble in the other extremities as they are not my life's work. Still, the knowledge is sound, and I have validated it. It is just not as much my work as it may be yours. Before we get into the details of each extremity, let me warn you about the differences in markers that are present on the feet versus the hands versus the face versus the ears. Each extremity can be likened to a witness of a car accident standing on a different corner of the same intersection. They all see a slightly different side of the story. Although they will agree that an issue is taking place in the body, the details each extremity focuses on seems to be slightly different in accordance with the physical and energetic function. More on this as we outline each extremity individually. Mapping the hands. So do you read the future? This is a common question I get asked when talking about reading the extremities in general, but even more so when referencing the hands. Hand reflexology is a standalone branch of the hands-on assessment technique. I have students that choose to only practice this side of the work. However, there is no similarity to palmistry, as we only see past stressors still being held in the body and present activity within the person. Likewise, we do not factor in the major lines of the hands. We do assess the lining present on the hands as an air marker, but not the significance of a lifeline, heart line, etc. The hands have their own flavor that colors their message in alignment with their form, function, and location. The hands are mobile and airy structures that allow us to hold, release, fiddle, sculpt, touch, and speak in accordance with our will in the present moment. They are an extension of horizontal zone two by location, which means that the hands are extremely influenced by feelings and emotions along with the structures in that zone, shoulders, chest, ribs, thoracic spine, lungs, heart, and arms. Although the hands will manifest the same general or acute issues as the other extremities, the hands have a more emotional and upper body flavor to the markers they carry. For instance, the hands will manifest arthritic fingers in the presence of still thoughts that are emotionally influenced and neck, in, and neck issues that strong heart center influence. I'm losing my place. That are emotionally influenced and neck issues that have a heavy hold, a shoulder component. If someone's injury or disease has a strong heart center influence, then there may be a more visual marker on the hands than the other three extremities. I've learned that the hands also obtain and release markers quicker than the other extremities because the hands are more circulatory in nature. All of these little nuances have surfaced as I've questioned why the hands seem to be more vocal during certain foot reading sessions. The mapping for the zones, the elemental markers, and coaching aspects remain entirely the same. The only major difference is the surface you are looking on, as the hands have different yet strikingly similar bone structure compared to the feet. Another minor difference is the use of anatomical position terms, but the reflexes stay the same. Let's outline the location of the guidelines, horizontal and vertical zones, and their respective meanings similar to how we did for the feet at the beginning of this book, but with a little more speed, as you know the basics already.
Um, and then we'll move on to the face. The face was the catalyst that began my initial descent into the underground of further mapping the non-foot extremities. It all started when a network partner of mine showed up to a breakfast meeting with a gigantic blemish on his left cheek in what would be Horizontal Zone 3. I knew that the body was telling me something and my curiosity had reached dangerously curious levels. So I asked inquisitively if his stomach had been bothering him around the time the blemish appeared. He responded with an enthusiastic, Oh yeah, it was all coming up last night and the night before. I just couldn't keep my food down. I responded all too cheerfully with, Perfect! And what about the blow up at work that happened recently? That is when he stopped, looked at me with an openly puzzled and slightly scared expression and asked, how do you know all of this? At that moment, I knew I had cracked the code for the universal mapping of the extremities and I haven't stopped proving it since then. The face as an extremity has been one of the most fascinating to study because of its position in the body. In mainstream culture, we don't cover the face. Shoes go over feet, gloves or pockets conceal the hands, the hair or a hat can disguise the ears. But the face is always exposed and forward, making it the most fun extremity to read without people looking at you like you're crazy. When you learn to accurately impose the zones, of the, the zones onto the face, an entire world opens up that lets you know more about a person more than they probably want you to know within the first few seconds of meeting them. As an extremity, the flavor of the ears and face is heavily reflective of horizontal zone one. Also, then the body chooses to manifest a marker on the face itself, there is the energetic language of needing to literally face something that is being suppressed. For this reason, I often think of the face as the whistleblower extremity. We can effectively hide the other three, but when the body wants your attention in a very real way, it will put something on your face to show it. The meaning of markers on the face can take on the additional interpretation of being top of mind to the people you are reading. From a mapping perspective, we are only concerned with the visible portion of the face from the hairline to the jaw. I do not read the scalp although I one day may venture into it, and I know there are schools of scalp reading out there. For now, I want to focus on the surface of the extremity that I can readily see. Unlike the other three extremities, the face only has one surface, and the right left sides are conjoined, so it takes a quick moment to get used to the physical nuances of seeing the map on this extremity. And then our very last section, I wanted to talk a little bit about the ears, which is probably the most controversial uh, of the extremities in this book. Mapping the ears. Before I state my case for mapping the ears the way I do, let me be sure to acknowledge that the traditional Chinese medicine, TCM, modality of auricular therapy, is still very accurate, albeit the exact opposite of how I map the ears when I read them. How can I say that my way is different, but also affirm that the TCM method of ear manipulation and assessment is valid? Because I've seen both work splendidly. This book is not meant to criticize any one way of practice. Instead, I've written this text to inform you of the successes I've had, nothing more. An acupuncturist friend of mine and I would play a game within our networking group. When one of us saw the other assessing someone, the other would politely ask to grab an ear and the game would begin. Both of us would be visually and textually scouring the surfaces of the ear for information on what was causing the imbalance in the victim, who at this point was rather confused at the heated vigor with which we peered into their listening mechanisms. Sometimes we would even draw a small crowd. The game would end as each of us stood back sidestepped and discussed our findings. To our utter amazement, we would come up with the exact same list of symptoms and root cause. The only difference was our language of choice to describe what we found 
and our methods of arriving at our conclusions. Other than that, we would both nail it. When you find someone who is good at what they do, regardless of the technique or training, you will find the same desired result. The same is true for mapping the extremities, but especially the ears in this case. I would get a little more insistent in regards to mapping the feet using reflexology theory as a baseline, but that's back to my point of the feet being my extremity of choice. An interesting observation I have made about the ears relates to the circumstances under which they manifest markers independently of the other three extremities. The flavor of the ears seems to be linked to its function in regards to hearing and listening. I've observed that the ears manifest markers relating to the soundtrack of our lives and issues that are specifically vocalized to us that the ears are responsible for intercepting. As an example, if you were told by a parent at an early age to choose a profession you hated and there was enough mental charge, the ears are also heavily influenced by horizontal zone one. To the situation, then a marker would warp the ear until the verbal assault on your nervous system was dealt with. We hear words all the time. Not every phrase or statement gets held onto by the body. I've just witnessed that when words are particularly striking to an individual, the timeline will match with a marker on the ear. And that is it. Um, yeah, we're almost at an hour. Uh, Sorry for talking your ear off, but I guess that's why you're here. Um, so again, just reading from my book, Foot Reading, A Reflexology Primer on Foot Assessment. Uh, we've covered the intro, coaching through the feet, as well as uh, the other three extremities I talk about in the back of the book. Um, oh, good, Tony. I'm so glad that you enjoyed it. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, Claire. When does the next book come out, Sam? Uh, thank you, Bev, for asking that question. I am working on it. Um, I've been working on it for about a year and a half. It is a very slow process. Um, so I will keep everybody posted, but I cannot give you a definitive timeline yet. Uh, but yeah, I'll stick around for a couple more minutes. Um, like I said, I've got a client coming in um, around 2.30, so in about uh, 45 minutes. So I'll stay until two uh, for another, for another eight to ten minutes or so. If you have any other questions, feel free to to post them in the comment section. Um, yeah, definitely let me know uh, if there are any things that you would like me to talk about. Um, I'm so glad that you enjoyed it, Amber. Thank you so much for, for jumping on. Um, like a fantastic episode of Jack, Jack Ennery. I'm, I don't know that reference. Um, Thank you so much. Would you ever consider doing audiobooks or podcasts? Um, yes, I have actually done audio recording for audiobooks and podcasts. Um, it's just not my primary uh, primary source of, of business. Can you recommend how I learn about face reading? Um, the book. Uh, I also talk um, about face reading in my online course. For those of you who are wondering, um, Shortly after the book was published, I turned the 12 sections of this book into an online course, uh, which is the Foot Reading Online Certification Program. Um, and that can be accessed through my online school. If you go to footwhisper.com, click classes, go to the online school, you'll be able to see the Foot Reading Online Certification Program, which is based on the book's contents. It's just 24 hours of credited learning uh, that will help you to master the techniques in that book. And there's a whole section dedicated to the face, the hands, the ears. But a lot of it is just learning how to map the feet and then applying that map to the face. Um, but the map, the maps that I use and talk about are actually in the book as well. So like for the, for the face specifically, like I have the map in there, right? Um, if you're also interested in reflexology charts, I have downloadable foot, hand, face, and ear reflexology and foot, hand, face reading charts um, available on my website. Thank you from, uh, from Ireland. Thank you, Nina. Gail, so glad that you enjoyed it. Yes, the, the YouTube channel is a great resource too. Um, I have a gas pedal foot client. Not sure how to work with him. Um, 
gas pedal foot is really interesting. The emotions are forward and the digestive system is hyperactive. Zone three is contracted and zone two is is bottled up and repressed. It's often a side effect of working too hard, dietary imbalances and improper emotional coping mechanisms. Uh, so kind of understanding those aspects together uh, and working with the client holistically through diet, through emotional management, um, and getting their lifestyle under control is is kind of part of the deeper coaching component with that with that particular type of client. It's just their foot is on the gas, you know, both literally in terms of their body is inflamed, it's spasmodic, it's it's constantly hyper aware, um, but then also internally, like they just they won't stop moving forward, they won't stop to rest. Thank you, Sally. Um, I'm so so I feel so blessed to be able to uh, be here with all of you and to share what what I have found um, along my reflexology and foot reading journey. So thank you for allowing me the platform to share. Thank you, Mary, for being such a loyal fan and for for jumping on. I appreciate it. Uh, Donna, so glad that you enjoyed it. Feel free to check out the online course. Um, Susie, I'm so glad that I was able to give you a fresh outlook. Um, yeah, it's definitely something to consider. Uh, thank you, Allison. Yeah, it it's and that's what I love about this series that that Sally's doing. It's one thing to read the words, but it's another thing to like have the author read it in their voice, in their speaking style. Um, when I went over to the UK for the first time, uh, that was kind of the feedback that I got the most was, oh, now I can hear you reading the book as opposed to just like words on a page because I write very much the way that I speak. Um, can you explain how to use the four elements in a reading? I explain that. I'm, that's a really, really deep conversation, Paula. I explain that in the book and in the online course. I wouldn't be able to get onto that uh, in four minutes, unfortunately. Um, yes, Kit. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, Maureen, my darling, thank you so much for jumping on. I appreciate it. Uh, Bev, you're absolutely amazing. Um, was it easier writing the book or reading it to us? Uh, that's that's a good question. It's it's kind of a different it's a different feel in both. They're not really equal. Writing the book, I wrote this book in four months. Like it was such a whirlwind process. I was already teaching the content. I already had the content in my head. It just kind of fell onto the page. Like I literally could not stop writing. I was writing in between client sessions. It was pretty crazy. Uh, but reading the book, like the book is the book is like a child that you that you birth and then like you go back and read it and you're like I wrote that like I made that thing I don't remember making that thing uh, so it is it is definitely kind of weird but refreshing in a way like oh he knew what he was talking about um, and that that's that's kind of cool um, Victoria I still get confused with the zones repetition 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 Part of the reason why I got so good at, at the foot reading aspect with the zones was because I literally had my charts up on my wall and every single client, I was looking at those charts as I was doing the work thinking, well, what does that mean? What does that mean? What's the order of the zones? What's the physical meaning? What's the mental emotional meaning? You just have to hammer it into your head like learning a new language. Uh, time and experience, like I talk about in the book, is really the best way to, to work with that. Uh, Donna, will you read My Feet Distantly as a client? Yes, so I do do virtual consultations. Um, if you would like to shoot me an email to sam at footwhisperer.com, it's just like a regular appointment, um, except we do it through Zoom. I ask you to take pictures of the feet. Uh, you email those pictures to me before the session, and then we have a discussion about what I find, how to improve your life based on the markers that we see, and just have an overall discussion on theory and kind of how to use the feet as guidelines for your physical, mental, emotional wellness. And that's something that I think is really important for us as reflexologists to consider at this time, because we're all doing stuff virtual. Um, love what you say about the dorsal bump. For sure, the anemia bump. Yeah, that's a great story in the book. It's actually one of my favorites. Um, <laughs> I added the book to my Christmas list. Fabulous. Do you do online foot uh, face readings or is it essential? It's not essential to do it in person. And that's one of the things that I love about this work is as long as somebody can send you pictures of the extremities and not pictures that are outdated, preferably pictures as soon 
uh, to the appointment as possible, um, and close-ups of the markers in question so that you can get an idea of the visual textural Im implications of that. It really does make um, it really does make a profound impact. Like you don't need to be in person at all. Uh, for the information to translate as long as you know your zones and mapping. And especially if you're uncomfortable with the material, if you're doing things live, right, then you have to be good at the stuff. You have to know your zones inside, outside, forward, backwards. You have to know how to decode things on the fly. But with virtual sessions and foot reading reports, which I talk about in the book, you know, people send in pictures and then you get time to take notes, to write down your thoughts, to edit, to go back and then prepare for the consult or to kind of prepare the foot reading report. Um, Susie, do we need to practice nutrition to give this advice out as well as reflexology, Sam? Um, that's a good question. Every every area of the world has their own requirements. I'm not a nutritionist, but I do have a lot of study in nutrition, clinical herbalism. I have many different backgrounds that give me that information to use as part of my toolkit. But if somebody's really considering changing their diet as part of their as part of their regimen, I always tell them go seek out a nutritionist. Go seek out somebody who's studied and registered and potentially licensed with the state that you're in to have a, a valuable and valid source of the information. I can tell you, you know, hey, don't, don't, you know, drink 20 sodas a day and maybe you should have some water and, and stuff like that, which is even gray area in terms of diagnosing and prescribing. But I think that if we're really going to consider diet, if the digestive markers really pop during the session and we're considering that as a major lifestyle remedy, then it is important to go with the licensed professionals who have that information um, and not try to be the, the one size fits all for everybody. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Do you sell zone wall charts? Yes, I do. Um, I sell digital versions internationally. Uh, so if you go to my website on the uh, at footwhisper.com, click the shop page, you'll be able to see charts and you'll be able to see the digital PDFs um, of the charts, which you can print off and stick in a binder or laminate. Uh, yeah, so if you want to email me, my uh, email address is sam at footwhisper.com. We can set up a consultation. Again, if you have um, if you have interest in the online course, just go to the website, uh, footwhisper.com, click classes, click the online school, uh, and you'll be able to see all the classes that I offer, the foot reading certification, the anatomy master class, um, free, freebies like how to map the feet, um, lots of lots of different stuff footwhisperer.com is the is the uh, the the website uh, do you or can you combine the readings uh, foot ears face with uh, your zodiac readings um, I'm still working on that part so the astrology stuff has been part of my practice way before reflexology I've just been a little bit more vocal about it now um, but yeah if a client comes in and we hit a wall with the foot reading uh, and we need to take the, the session in a different way. Like I have 500 hours of training in yoga. I have a 300 hour clinical herbalist certification. I've, I'm a practicing astrologer for 15 years. Like there are so many tools that I have in my toolkit that I can offer to a client. Um, if foot reading doesn't seem to scratch that itch, then we can always go into multiple realms of holistic therapy and work within the toolkits that I have. Agreed, Maureen. We all need to have that referral network. How long have you been a reflexologist and where did you train? I've been a reflexologist for like nine years. No, I trained in 2009. 2009, so 11 years. I've been a reflexologist for 11 years and I trained underneath Dwight Byers, um, who has since passed away. Um, but Dwight is actually located in St. Petersburg, Florida, or was located in St. Petersburg, Florida, which is the city over from Tampa where I'm located, oddly enough. So I just coincidentally happened to be by the master, you know, funny stuff like that. Um, fabulous. Okay, thank you, everybody. I'll let you return to your days. I hope that, <laughs> excuse me. Ooh, goodness. 
I hope that all of you who stayed enjoyed the talk. Um, I hope that you who are watching the replay enjoy the replay. If you do have any questions, feel free to hit me up on social media, send me an email to sam at footwhisper.com, and we'll continue the conversation after this, uh, after this video. But have a fantastic rest of your day and your week, and I'll close us out with uh, the final line um, in the book, May the feet be with you.